Hey, welcome back to Copperhead Customs and welcome to a new episode on our Bedford. Uh, I think this one will be maybe episode 30. If you're new to the channel, go down there and catch up. I'll go and I just would have put up a picture of where it started from. So this cab sat in a paddock for 60 years in in uh, western Queensland in the in the middle of Australia okay it's where we dug it out from it was buried uh, you can see the dirt line that dark line there that's how deep it was buried so all of that was in the dirt buried deep it actually when we got it out it actually went like it we had to put about six ton of lifting force on it to get it to pluck out of the ground so anyway and what we've done is we turned it into this and you know the cool part is we're doing it for less than five thousand dollars that's right less than five thousand dollars australian which equate that into american money is probably about three thousand dollars american and we're going to have this thing running the driver now we are very 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 close to having it completed so if you've been kicking with us or if you did just go down and check out all the other footage you would see in the last episode we are in the middle of doing our front suspension, replacing all the bushes and bull joints and whatever, and whatever, rubbers and everything, okay? And what we did just show you is something that no one else probably has, which is it can all be done with hand tools. A couple little pulley kits you've got to buy, a couple hundred dollars in kits, and it can all be done. So you have a few options. You can go and spend a thousand dollars or more on a 10 ton press. Yeah. You can go and take your car to the mechanic. And God knows what he'll charge you to do this. I honestly think it would be a few thousand dollars. At least a thousand. You could take all the arms off and take them to the mechanic. And he'd charge you, still charge you a bit. You could try to get the bushes out yourself, like some people do by cutting them out or whatever, like I've seen, and then they take them to the mechanic for them to press new ones in. Still got to pay the money. Now, I don't like doing that myself. I'd rather go buy the tool. So I went and bought that kit, which is half of it's on the bench. I bought that kit, and that is called a uh, ball joint remover kit, I'm pretty sure. And I also had a, already had a kit, a ball joint separator kit to separate them from the lower control arms separate the spindle and the yeah so i'd gone and bought that because sometimes they stick so with those two kits and some sockets and spanners you can actually do this okay that's what we just showed in the last one we're going to have a more in-depth one of them uh, an actual proper how to do it video coming very soon when I do the other side, I'm actually going to, that's what the other side's going to be, a more in-depth showing you what you need, what you've got to do. You need to make a few little spaces and clips and stuff, but it's nothing that any of you can do with some basic hand tools. Okay? So, what you're rambling on a bit today, aren't you? Yeah, I am. So, what are we doing? What we're going to do is we're going to continue building this. So, what we've got is... The lower control arms in, not done up, because you do them up at ride height. Okay, now if you want to know what I'm on about, go watch the last video, and I, where I, at the end there I explain what I'm talking about with that. The spindle's in, ball joints are all done, it's got all new bushes in, top, bottom bushes are done, ball joints are done. We need to just order this uh, bump stop rubber, replace that. The spring's in. So what have we got to do to continue this? We've got to mount our new shocker in from underneath. I'll just turn the camera that way because the light's a bit nasty for you. So we've got to stick our shocker in from underneath and bolt that in. We've then got to put our brake backing plate, give that a clean and put that on. We've got to put a new wheel cylinder in it. We have a new brake hose to put in it. We're going to make a, probably make a new brake line. Well, definitely we'll be making a new brake line, not in this video, that'll be it later. But we can put the new brake line in, the new wheel cylinder in, and put all our new brake components in. We will also look at probably knocking, trying to knock out the bearings. So this will be something else to see if we can do to knock out the bearings 
out of the hubs and put new bearings. I'm pretty sure I have new bearings for the hubs and put new bearings in the hubs as well. And when that's done, all said and done, we will have the whole front end completely rebuilt. That's right. So we're not only building this car for under five grand, but we're putting all new front end in it. Front rubbers, ball joints, shocks, uh, brakes, all the brake components, brake pads, bearings, everything is all going to be new. Not bad for five grand, eh? Anyway, if you look at those brake shoes, they were quality. Quality, heaps of meat left on them, not. Something I'd like to do is I would like to stop. So, anyway, enough rabbiting on. We're going to just get stuck into this and get this one done. So, we, in this video, we are definitely going to finish this side. And that may be it. We may do the other side in the next video. We'll, not, we'll, we'll just see. We'll get all this side completely done first. We'll see how long we are in the tooth. And we'll go from there. All right? A ripper.
be 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 back right so it's all done this side this side anyway so we've got the uh right so what did we do we put new bearings in the uh in the hub you would have seen me do that up the top and then we've uh that's been port bolted on uh split pin uh so you would have seen me pack grease into the bearings and then you would have seen me put a smear inside the hub is what i do and then i actually put grease in in this cover too that's just how i, how I do it uh the backing plate got bolted on i actually ran in i actually was messing around a bit there with the wheel cylinder as i thought it was fouling and in the inside but it wasn't uh so yeah and you would have seen me clean this up a bit and then you would have seen me put some grease on those little flat bits that's where the shoe hits now a uh, small shoe out of the two you can see this one's got meat from there to there and this one has meat from there to there so the small shoe goes to the front uh yeah we had a little fight with that as always drum brake can be a little bit of a pain but they're easier than the rears the fronts are because you don't have the handbrake assembly so yeah we did all the new brakes uh you see me do the steering arm hopefully you've seen that uh and then they got pumped with the grease as well so they're full of grease um we put a new brake hose on at the back there now here's a here's a tip here's one of my tips something for you is, is put that brake hose on before you button everything up because it was fouling on the uh, spindle a little bit when i first tried to start it so i had to actually loosen you would have seen me loosen this and the two bolts in there to just get this away a little bit to get it started once it started it's all good uh what you didn't see was the um because i did them the other day both uh ball joints were greased okay and yeah like so so we did the steering arm we put a new shock in a minute ago and did that up up the top uh what else did we do i think that's about it so yeah so we've got new brakes new wheel cylinder so new brakes is in every component of the brake is new new springs new lockers new pads new wheel cylinders new brake line New steering arm, so that's your, uh, what do they call them? Um, I don't know, I haven't one of my brain farts where I can't think. Um, what do they call them? Inner and outer tie rods or something, I think they call it. Uh, so yeah, they're new. Uh, new bearings in here, new brake shoes. Uh, what else? New shock, all new bushes, new ball joints. So the whole front is is replaced everything in there is replaced we've got to put a new bump stop rubber in we've got to replace that later later date we're going to have to rip them out i'll order them i just hadn't ordered them and i don't know if i, I don't think i have the sway bar bushes at the front there so we'll get some of them now as you would have seen is i've just put rubber bushes in okay now uh some people will be saying oh why didn't you put uh nolithane or whatever you call them in well i don't actually like them okay uh personally the ride is too hard right now the rubber bushes give us a nicer ride now with this here this isn't going to be the most comfortable old jigger as it is we're not this isn't a speed machine see this is a little stock 202 so we're not going to be you know this is just a little putt putt machine so i would rather it be comfortable so that's why I've done the rubber bushes in everything instead of the nolithanes, okay? So it has nothing to do with money or any of that. It's all just to do with I want the softer ride, okay? So all we've got to do basically is I'll just give the... Uh, the shoes are actually very good. Is that the shoe? Is that what you call that? Now, no, it's not. Uh, what do you call that? The drum. Anyway, that's that doesn't need machining or nothing. I'm just going to give it a little... Uh, scotch bright clean it up a little bit and we sit that on and all we have to do is adjust our just our pads out with our adjuster later of course we're gonna have to bleed the brakes and all that malarkey later on but yeah so this corner done now we've got to move to the other corner and do it all again fun 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 yes so hopefully you got most of that we'll uh, just time lapse the other side and uh we'll go from there hey so let's see if we can do it again Ripa. Boom. All right. So I think we'll end that video there on that one side. I think we'll do that. And I'll go jump on the other side. 
and uh, yeah, because this will be it will be around the it's probably around twenty minutes, so we'll keep this one short, sharp, and shiny, eh? So there it is. This side's all done. Like I just explained, we've got the uh, the drum on there now. All we have to do is uh, give it a bit of an adjustment, and then uh, do the brake lines. So uh, yeah, success, freaking success, guys. So uh, we just did pretty much the whole front end, holding front end, bushes, ball joints, sway bar, uh, sway bar links, brakes. Brake hoses, frick, what else? Uh, tie rod ends, the whole, the whole nine yards. We did everything, all right? So we've pretty much done the whole front end. Like I said, the only things we need to do are sway bar bushes and bump stops. Okay? And what did we do it with? We did it with hand tools. Okay? No going to the mechanic, no going to the getting the press, nothing. We just did it all with hand tools and it's all done, rebuilt. So uh, it's probably taken me... What's it taking me? I've probably spent uh, two hours, an hour or two hours today. Uh, it's only because of the drum brakes. The drum brakes sometimes fight me. And I had a couple of little snags because I've never done it. Uh, it's just in the procedure, okay? you just got to make sure you get your procedure right. So we'll see how quick I do the next one. That'll be next video, I think. We'll think we'll put it in the next video. I don't know. I'm about to do a how-to, a proper how-to on this. So, yeah. Anyways. Thanks for watching. We'll go and and like uh, like I always say, shout out all the subscribers. Uh, it's all for you guys. And uh, we're another step closer when this is done. When this is done, guys. When I finish this today, hopefully I finish it today. I'll get very close. We uh, basically oh, we are so close. We've got electrical to do, and I'm nutting it all out myself. Um, yeah, so I've been doing a bit of research and study and uh, I've gone and got the manual and so I'm just going through the schematic, uh, the schematic wiring diagram in the manual of what a normal Holden would be and just trying to decipher what I freaking need, what I don't need and so how to do it. So basically I'm making my own schematic up, um, sort of, I've sort of started it, I've got a, yeah, so I'm uh, probably a quarter of the way halfway through doing that. And then I'll just then we can come in and quickly wire it. So we've got to quickly wire it up. We still got to get the motor to run. Um, yeah, we're under the final. We're on the final list now. We've got to do a couple brake lines. We've got the brake master cylinder. That's probably our next next major task is to mount the brake master. And once the brake master is done, uh, seriously, once the brake master is done, I think that's ninety percent of it. So then all we've got to do is plumb the motor and trans. Uh, wire it, and uh, yeah, that's what we'll be doing that. We'll be doing that down the street. Now, you know what our problem's going to be? Is I'm getting so close to finishing it, and if you have a proper look out here, this is what I've been doing yesterday and today with the, uh, with the, uh, with the mate. Yeah, bricks and pavers. Yes, huge. <laughs> huge. <laughs> huge amount. So they got to get cleaned up, and they're going all through here. Okay, so we're going to actually have a floor in here. We'll send them over that way. We'll see how much we got. We might hand off that way. Or who knows where we're going to go with them? Because I think there's a right. So the photo we got was about there. That little pile. <laughs> That's what we thought we were going to get, and I thought it was enough pavers to finish off my little piece in here that's not paved. I don't know if you've noticed that in the videos, like we had, we've, we've paved the shed, we didn't cement it, but I've got a little piece at the back there that needs finishing. Okay, so that's what we were getting. Some pavers to do that, and look what we've got. So yeah, it took us all day yesterday. I think we did, uh, oh God knows, over 10 trailer loads. Uh, it was like a bush track, so we couldn't take the car trailer, we had to take the little trailer, and I think we, Nearly killed my little trailer. So anyway, we're rambling, aren't we? So anyway, uh, that's what we've been doing. So don't think that we don't freaking work around here because we freaking work our asses off. So we are just about there, guys. We're seriously, we're nearly there. Electrical, plumb the motor up and that. And honestly, couple little odds and sods. 
bolt here, uh, a nut here, stuff like that, a hose clamp. Boom, boom, we're on lock, and we are driving this down the street. So what I was rambling on about with the bricks is <laughs> that's how we're taking the car out. So that's going to be my hold up. I think I'm going to have this finished before I get them laid. Worst case, worst case, we will move Chief. We'll skull drag this one out. Uh, yes, so we just got to, we probably need to not get this off the ground to put the front and rear in just yet until we skull drag that out of there. And then we'll try to take the, the old Bedford. We'll try to get her out of that roller door. Alrighty, so, and then that can come in, and guess what comes in next? Oh yeah, they're all gonna throw, the cars are coming! <music> 32, you haven't seen the 32, the 32's coming real soon. Old mate's got that. He's welding out the chassis as we speak, he's boxing the chassis in. We've done a bit of a deal. I palmed a bit of work out. He's because I didn't really couldn't really be bothered and I'm too busy. So I palmed something out. He's we're both gonna be very happy at the end of the day. So he's doing that. So then that comes here. That comes in the shed soon. We got the badass motor sitting in the corner waiting for it. Oh yeah, you haven't seen my 32, but it is freaking wicked. The only thing I don't like about it is it's fiberglass. <sighs> Because I don't really like working with fiberglass. But it's going to be light and freaking scary. <laughs> so the 32 will be in here soon. and But the one that's going to come down, the one that I'm really excited about, is... Well, here's something. We've got a 32 Ford that we're putting that Chevy in. And there's a seat for it that I've made. So yeah, there's a lot done on that car. Then we've got our 28 Oakland, which is a GM product, that we're putting a Ford in. And guess what's coming down here soon? Oh yeah, the Oakland's going to come into the shed and we're going to start working on that. So soon, this is gone. We're working on this. We're working on the Oakland. And we'll have our 32 stuffed in the corner chassis. And we'll be piecing. So with the 32, what the plan is, is the motor goes back in. All the suspension goes back in. The four bar rear end goes back in it. Uh, basically, we turn it back into a rolling chassis with everything on it. And then I've got to get it inspected by the engineers. Okay, once the engineers give me the tick off on it, then I pull it apart again, I can paint the chassis. I'm not allowed to paint the chassis because they want to inspect all the workmanship and the welding. You see? Then I can pull it apart again, paint the chassis, build it again. By that time, because old mate's going to take the fiberglass shell and he's going to bar it out. Okay, like we only need, we don't really need to bar it out much, but we're going to actually bar it out and basically build a roll cage, hidden roll cage in it, is the plan. Because it's going to be a scary little car, so we thought, yeah, well, let's do it properly, eh? So he's going to then take the shell and bar it out while I'm fricking around with the chassis. In the meantime, we're going to be building this, and the Oakland that's up the top is a lot further on than what everyone realises. So the Oakland's going to come in here, and we're going to bang out on that Oakland and get some serious metal work going. All right, so that might keep you a little bit more interested because we're going to be doing some serious metal work on that. We've got to put a floor... So we'll be putting, using the, uh, the die things, I can't think what they're called. You know where you get your little groovies in. We'll be using them to do, by, we'll be putting patterns in the floor. We've got a little bit of the cab to make. Uh, we've got to put the front and rear in it. And uh, yeah, Bill will be building an interior. If you've seen the Oakland video, if not, go and have a look at the Oakland. Go down there and look at the Oakland video. And uh, you'll see me thoughts of what I'm doing with it. It's going to be a badass car, that one, all right? So anyway, there's a little ramble. As you can see, I'm a bit excited because we're getting so freaking close, guys. Getting so freaking close. So, a bit of rambling at the end of this one. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Bye.